السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله
he was like he was the one whom they feared most and their abuses of the Prophet والسلام, was limited to verbal abuse. After the death of Abu Talib, they widened their attack to include physical harm and abuse. Dirt was thrown on the head of the Prophet, and on one occasion, even the waist of a slaughtered animal was placed between his shoulders while he was pro pro prostrating in prayer. Must have been <clears throat> heartbreaking for Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet والسلام, to see this and to clean it. Can anyone imagine how she felt for her dear father? It must have been harder for the Prophet والسلام, to see his beloved daughter see this and see a father in that state with a sense of helplessness. It was narrated that the Prophet والسلام, said, مَا نَالَتْ مِنِّي قُرَيْشِ مَا نَالَتْ مِنِّي قُرَيْشُ مَا أَكْرَهُ حَتَّى مَا تَهَبُطَ Quraysh could not really hurt me until Abu Talib died. As for Khadija radiallahu anha, she was the Prophet's first wife, the mother of all of his children except Ibrahim. She was not an ordinary woman. From the Islamic history, we are informed that the first couple of first people to respond positively to the call of the Prophet and enter into the face from men was Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. From the youth was Ali ibn Abi Talib karramallahu wajha and from women Khadija bin Khalid radiallahu an. But when we look at it from the point of view of the first Muslim to ever enter Islam, the first it was Khadija bin Tukhwaif. She was a tower of support for the Prophet. She was the one who almost assured them of his success and was always there for him to lean on her shoulder after experiencing all the abuses he had to endure calling for the new faith. Later, that year, the Prophet والسلام, went to Ta'if to call its people to Islam. There, he was ridiculed and thrown out of the city. The children of Ta'if were set loose on the Prophet and his companion, insulting them and throwing rocks at them. Feeling helpless and weak, the Prophet's spirits were down. As any human being, the Prophet was discouraged, and after all, he was a human being. As the Quran tells us, on the time of the Prophet ﷺ, I am but a human being. The difference between me and others is that I receive the revelation. For a while, the Prophet had doubts about his capability to carry on the tremendous responsibility. He was not sure if he was doing the right thing, and he was afraid that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped supporting him. So he sat down on the outskirts of Qaif in the shade of a wall, talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> it was in this address that he uttered his famous statement. إن لم يكن بك غضب عليه فلا أبارك. If you, Allah, have no displeasure with me, then nothing else matters. The priorities are set and they are clear. The highest priority is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing else comes even close. All what the Prophet wanted to make sure of was not an immediate victory over the people who abused him or saving him from their abuse. No, he was willing to take all of that and it won't matter to him as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not displeased with him. As a matter of fact, when he was asked 
if he wanted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to punish the abusers and as did the prophets before him. He said addressing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah forgive them, forgive my people as they don't know. What that state of mind with such spirit so dark as it was and as sad as he was. The Prophet was uplifted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on that night, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhanallah asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa aladhi barakna hawla lirnuriyahu min ayatina inna huwa al sameer al basar. Glory to Allah, who took his servant for a journey by night from the sacred mosque to the farthest mosque to praise him be blessed, in order that we might show him some of our signs, for he is the one we hears and sees all. The Prophet ﷺ was taken from Mecca to Jerusalem and then he ascended to the heavens. Subhanallah asra bi abdihi life. You notice the use of the word abd. This term is not given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala haphazardly. It is an honor bestowed on the best of beings. In Surah Al Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَجَدَا عَبْدًا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا هَتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدَلْنَا عِنْدِ So they found one of our servants, Abd, on whom we had bestowed mercy from ourselves and whom we had taught knowledge from our own presence. In Surah Saad, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَاتْقُرْ عِبَادَنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ Again, Ibad, Abd. And remember our servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, processors of power and vision. Verily, we have chosen them for a special purpose. To be Abd of a human being is the ultimate in humiliation. But to be the Abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate honor. Why Isra and Mi'raj? The Quran is very clear. The Nuriyahu min ayatina. In order that we might show him some of our signs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did this with some variations with other prophets before Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. For example, with Prophet Moses alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إنما أنا ربك فخلا عن عليك إنك بالواد المقدس طوى وأنا اخترتك فاسمع لما يوحى. But when he came to the fire, he was called, O Moses, verily I am the Lord. Therefore, take off thy shoes. Thou art in the sacred valley طوى. I have chosen thee. Listen then, the inspiration given to thee. Moses was scared, was not confident he was worthy of such task. What if he failed? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to give him confidence. So he said to Moses about his king, Qala nukiha ya Musa. Alqaha faida hiya hayyatun tasa'a. Qala khudha wa la takhaf. سنعيدها سيرتها الأولى ومن وضمن يدك يدك إلى جناحك تخرج بيضاء من غير سوء آية الأخرى ينريك من آيات الأخرى الله سيد موسيس throw the cane for Moses and he threw it and behold it was a snake active in motion الله سيد seize it and fear not we shall return it to its former condition. Now draw thy hand close to thy side. 
It shall come forth white and shining without harm or stain and as another sign in order that we may show thee of our great signs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Moses the confidence that he is behind them and that he subhanahu wa ta'ala will not leave him astray. And after that was accomplished through showing the signs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Moses, اِذْهَبْ إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنَ إِنَّهُ طَغَىٰ Now, go down to the Pharaoh, for he indeed transgressed all doubts. The event of Isra and Miraj made clear the unity and the completion of faith. As the journey of the Prophet ﷺ ended in Jerusalem on the site of the temple built by the wood and Suleiman, he led the former messengers in a prayer affirming that the message has always been the same and the messengers greeted Muhammad as a brother messenger. Also, that such message has been completed by the message of Muhammad as affirmed by being led by the Prophet in prayer. In this regard, the poet Ahmad Chawfi composed a beautiful poem and then he said Asra bika Allahu laylan il malaikum wal rusli bil wal ruslu bil masjid al taqsa ala qadami lamma qatarta bihim al taqfu bi sayyidi ka shuhri bil badri aw ka al jundi bil alami salla wa ra'aka minhum kullu bi khatarin wa man yafuz bi habibillahi yaktami Allah has joined you during the night where the angels and the messengers were eagerly awaiting at the Father's mosque. When you arrived, they gathered around you like the stars around the moon or like the soldiers around the flag. They pray behind you and it is indeed a prize to be led in prayer by the beloved Allah. It was during the ascension of the Prophet والسلام, that the five prayers were mandated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, as they purify themselves, Muslims that is, and leave all of their worldly concerns aside and stand in humility in prayer, they ascend to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thus, such prayers must be performed in true humility and sincerity. And sincerity means that it must lead the Muslim to follow the path prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all matters. When the Prophet والسلام, told Quraysh about this journey and ascension, naturally they disbelieved them and they tried to plant the seed of doubt in the hearts of Muslims. Few of the Muslims that day reneged and left but the majority were steadfast. When Abu Bakr was told of the story, he did not believe that the Prophet actually claimed it. But when he was assured that the Prophet did claim, and when he was asked if he still believed him, Abu Bakr indicated that he did, saying that he believed him in matters greater than and more important than this. In Ghana Qad Qala Faqad Salah. If you if he indeed said it, then he is he did not lie. There have been many books written about that night, and many questions were discussed. Some of the conclusions of those books are not always the same. A couple of the most important questions are. Did the Prophet ﷺ journey and ascend in soul, or both body and soul? Or was it a dream? The other question is, did he alayhi salatu wasalam see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? First, did the Prophet perform the journey and ascension in soul, or in both body and soul, or was it a dream? 
from what we know, Quraysh disputed that he, the Prophet والسلام, could accomplish in a very short time what took people months and months to accomplish, namely traveling from Mecca to Jerusalem. With this in mind, we deal with the question at hand. In Surah Al-Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to his messenger, لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل إن علينا جمعه وقرآن فإذا قرأناه تتبع قرآن ثم إن علينا بيان Move not thy time concerning the Quran to make haste their, their way. It is for us to collect it and to recite it. But when we have recited it, follow thou its recital. Nay more, it is for us to explain it. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to explain it. Nay more, it is for us to explain it. How would God subhanahu wa ta'ala explain the Quran? Would he subhanahu wa ta'ala bring down another book of explanation? No. The Quran explains itself. So to answer the, our question, we consult the Quran. And Surah Al Isra, in verse 1, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhanallahi Asra bi abdihi bilayla in al Masjid al Haram in al Masjid. Glory be to Allah, who took his servant from a journey by night from the sacred mosque to the farthest mosque. But then, at the same time, the same surah, verse 60, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا جَعَلْنَا الرُّؤْيَةَ الَّتِي أَرَيْنَاكَ إِلَّا فِتْنَةً لِلنَّاسِ We granted the vision which he, we showed thee, but a trial for people. Very important. A fitna. A trial. A test. That the Isra was a fitna, was a test for people. Testing the strength of their faith. So if the Isra was a dream, this would not have been really a test. And Quraysh would have argued about and simply said, Abzadu Ahla. Ah, stupid dreams. And if the Isra took place in spirit only, without the body, Quraysh, Quraysh's disputation would have con concentrated around the question of can the spirit actually leave the body and travel by itself to come back? But they were not disputing this point. Rather, they were questioning the Prophet's claim that he went to Jerusalem and back during that night. That is a journey that took weeks and weeks. Thus, must have been by both spirit and body. And that is the opinion of most of the scholars. The second question, brothers and sisters, did the Prophet والسلام, see God? Did he see God during his ascension? The idea that might have, that he might have, comes from Surah An-Najm. And this Surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالنَّجْمُ إِلَى هَوَى مَا ضَلَّ صَاحِبُكُمْ وَمَا غَوَى وَمَا يَنْصِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوَى أَلَّمَهُ شَدِيدُ الْقُوَى لُمِرَّةٍ فَاسْتَوَى وَهُوَ بِالْقُفُقِ الْأَعْلَى ثم دنا فتدل فكان قاب قوسين او ادنى فاوحى الى عبده ما اوحى. By the star when it goes down, your companion neither astray nor being misled. Nor does he utter of his own desire. It is no less than inspiration sent down for him. He was taught by one mighty in power, endued with endued with wisdom, or he appeared in stately form while he was in the highest part of the horizon. Then he approached and came close, and was at a distance of about two bow lengths or even nearer, 
So did Allah convey the inspiration to a servant, convey what he meant to convey. So some people, brothers and sisters, think that as the Prophet came nearer and nearer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a message from Allah directly to the Prophet So let's find out if that is true or not. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الرسول Brothers and sisters He approached and came close and was at the distance of about two arrow length that's the arrow that you use in war or even man. So he was very close. So did he convey the inspiration to his servant? By far the great majority of scholars believe that who approached and came closer was not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather was Gibril alayhi salam. When God says, <coughs> by one mighty in power, that is Gibreel. In Surah Taqweer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said something very similar about Gibreel. إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ فِي قُوَّةٍ عِنْدَ ذِي الْعَرْشِ مَتِينٍ مُطَاعٍ ثَمَّ أَمِينٍ وَمَا صَحِبُهُمْ الْمَجْمِينٍ Verily, this is the word of a most honorable messenger. And Lord with power, held in honor by the Lord of the throne, with authority there and faithful his trust. And for people, your companion is not one possessed. So Gabriel alayhi salam was the one who approached and came closer. And he was two arrow length or nearer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave his servant the inspiration. This is consistent with another part of the same surah, Surah Al-Najm, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ نَزْلَةً أُخْرَى عند سدرة المنتهى إنها جنة المأوى إذ يغشى السدرة ما يغشى For indeed he, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam saw him at the second descent near the lottery of that most bound It is well known that the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam saw Gibril alayhi salam in his real form once before Isra and Mi'raj as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Takbir, وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ بِالْأُفْقِ الْأَعْلَى And without a doubt we saw him, Ibrahim that is, in the clear horizon. And it was the second time that he saw him during the night of Isra al-Mahmaj. As in real form. Most of the time he came as a man, as a person. But he is a real form with wings and so on. The opinion is consistent with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicated in Surah Al-Araq. وَلَمَّا جَاءَ مُوسَى لِمِيْقَاتِنَا وَكَلَّمَهُ رَبُّهُ قَالَ رَبِّي أَرِنِي أَنْظُرْ إِلَيْهِ قَالَ لَنْ تَرَانِي وَلَكِنْ أَنْظُرْ إِلَى الْجَبَلِ فَإِنْ اسْتَقَرَّ مَكَانَهُ فَسَوْفَ تَرَانِي فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّى رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ جَعَلَهُ دَكَّا وَخَرَّ مُوسَى صَاحِقًا When Moses alayhi salam came to the place appointed by us, and his Lord addressed them, he said, O my Lord, show thyself, show thyself to me, that I may look upon thee. And Allah said, He will not be able to see, but look upon the mountain. If it abides in its place, then you will be able to see me. When his Lord showed himself to the mountain, he made it as dust, and Moses fell down in a swoon. And when Aisha al-Humayra, radiallahu anha, and she always, the Prophet used to say, Qudu misfadinukum an hadi al-Humayra. 
Take at least half of your religion from this woman, al Humaira. Some people said because she had red hair, others said that she had the face with a little bit fringe, but anyway, an Aisha. An Aisha told a lot of, of the sayings of the Prophet, Hadith. And she was considered to be a scholar in her own right. When Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about that, she said the Prophet never saw his Lord. Saying, where is that from Allah saying, La tutrikuhu l'apsa, wa hao yudrikuhu l'apsa. No vision can grasp him, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but his grasp is over all vision. See, the, 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 the scholars, when they speak, when, and then this, the proof is beyond the Nidam. Also, it is narrated that the Prophet والسلام, was asked if he did see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his answer was, I saw light. The Aytunura did not see God subhanahu wa ta'ala. As was told to Moses before, no human being will be able to. So it's consistent. So as Muslims, we celebrate this moving event by remembering the Prophet والسلام, and honoring him as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored him. And the best way we can honor our Prophet is by sincerely believing in the message he came with and to follow in his footsteps and follow his sunnah. And brothers and sisters, maybe another day we talk about what we mean by the sunnah of the Prophet because some people misinterpret that. And they come and say, as they you hear a lot, wa kullu bid'atin dalala, wa kullu dalala jim finnai. If the Prophet did not do it, and if you do it differently, then that's bid'ah. And the bid'ah is in, in hell fire. What would you say to Umar ibn Khattab, who got all Muslims during Ramadan? So all of them, behind one imam, praying the Tarawih. Never happened during the time of the Prophet. And what did Ali ibn Ali Talib Karam Allah Wajahu say about that when he saw it? He said, Ni'am al bid'atu hadihi ya Umar. See, it's the best bid'ah. There is a bid'ah, a good bid'ah, and a bad one. And we have to. The bid'ah is that you make a haram thing halal, or a halal thing haram. That's the bid'ah. But the Prophet والسلام, once was invited for dinner and they wanted to really honor him. So they had something called a top. A top. Until now in Saudi Arabia, this is a delicacy. It is a big lizard. He catch and, and cook and eat. When he sat there and he looked at it and recognized it, he said, You eat. Ta'afuhu nafsi. Cannot get myself to where we say he told us to eat. So it is not a sunnah that you don't eat that or you eat in anything else. So we have to distinguish between what we mean by sunnah, okay? Because that's not really understood. Let us pray. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت بارك لنا فيما اعطيت اللهم اجعل القران وسنه رسولك منهاجنا ونورنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم لا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا يا رب العالمين عباد الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون ذكر الله يذكركم وذكر أقدامكم لعلكم السلام تذكرون الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا الصلاة حيا الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
straighten your lines. It is a very, very important part of your prayer. As it is told that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not look at a crooked line. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanirrahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Edina al-Sarat al-Mustaqim Sarat al-Ladhina an'amta alayhim Ghayri al-Mardubi alayhim Walatallin وضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فاغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم الصراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله